Almost immediately after we'd hauled Starry Horizons out of the water, we had a big crane come to take down the mast. This was a bit overdue, as our rig had gotten us through over 45,000 nautical miles in a full circumnavigation. There was a bit of damage that needed to be fixed, so it was time to give her some extra love. Together with our rigger, Tim Leary, we had a lot of work to do. Well, I've been working up on Starry Horizons today. I have spied Tim down here working on the mast. Uh, it's pretty late in the day. I think I might be the one of the last in the yard. But let's take a look at the mast and see kind of what he's been doing here. The mast has now been moved inside, make things a little bit easier to work on. It is so interesting just to see it just completely stripped down like this. Never ever seen it like that. But um, down here on the ground, we've got, this is the old uh, track that's got all of the you can see some of the damages and stuff down here. So that's what we're, one of the things we're gonna be replacing. Up here at the masthead, there's been some pretty serious corrosion of like our VHF antenna. Uh, you can see that's, that's a cable for it. So contemplating replacing that, gonna be swapping out a new tricolor. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm going down the wrong side. I wanted to show you what the, the new mass track has come in. This whole box right here, this holds the new mass track. It's coming in 20 foot sections, so we're gonna have to splice them together, but uh, it's a lot easier than shipping a whole like 70 foot piece of track. So with everything all kind of disconnected and stuff down here, Tim's been cleaning up everything for me. And uh, he's gonna be here in just a second, talk about a one other thing he found that is kind of down here on the ground, but yeah, pretty cool to see it just all disassembled like this and feels good to be getting this all done. So, okay, so this is the head state mast town uh, and this is the bushing that sits in the mast town and the, the head state pin goes through this hole. Right. So what's happening now is this pin and this bushing is being pushed down this way because you can feel a ridge right here yeah, there's a definite bulge right there. And so the material is being pushed from the shear load. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna take this, open this hole up, get a larger bushing and a little longer. And then in the, in the, in the, in the toggles, when the toggle comes in this place, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make Delrin spacers to fill up that gap. So that toggle fits nice and snug in his mast hound. No so moving. You, so you, you can see these pieces this wear area right here is when the toggle there's probably a little bit. it well when the head when you tack or you go downwind the head stays moving like this you mm -hmm. don't know it but it's minor up here so um so this is the wear that happens from the toggle so you can feel there's a ridge there there's a ridge there, there, there. so hopefully we can fix it by making the toggle enable it for moving the, these here you can see this this toggle here, um, you can see how it's proud on this side, and then on the other side, it's indented. So what this is, you can see this is a little gap right through here. And that's where it's pushed over. I think I can probably take a a a, a a flat bar on it and move it back. And then these little punch marks here is what they do to hold this bushing in place during manufacturing. Mm. It's kind of a archaic way but it doesn't really work because it moved yeah <laughs> <laughs> it didn't fall they, they, they tried but yeah, it, it was not yeah. a perfect solution yeah but. yeah so see that's what it that's what happens when you don't inside there all that oxidation over years and years with nothing to protect it that's what you get so you're gonna give us a good chep, there, there, chep gel bath yeah there's no charge for that yeah <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, that's good. <laughs> so this is this is all this is the stem ball cup that goes inside here. It sits inside there like that, and then this this is the turn, turnbuckle stem ball, which will fit in the other other end. So you got stem balls on each end. See? Perfect. So a lot of oxidation in there, and Tim was just saying this one actually had to be cut off because you can see there is actually a little bit of a bend there. Yeah. Not quite supposed to be there like that. Yeah. And then here's, these are the spreader ends 
this is oxidation where the, sits, the wire sits in the spreader. You can see the, the lay of the wire from the oxidation laying right in there. Wow. That would be a left-hand lay wire. <laughs> <laughs> and then here's the shiv box for the Genoa. It's out, shivs out. New shiv will be good pin. The pins are getting cleaned. Lots of signs this poor mass has been used a lot over the last eight years. While all those parts were being cleaned up and necessary replacements were on order, we could begin by getting the new mass track installed. With the new track sections being 20 feet long, we get to do these splices in here. So it's pretty much exactly what we've got down at the part we removed for the track cars. But yeah, it looks real clean. Tim has been working really hard on the mast. Uh, it's probably a little hard to see. We'll get a little closer in just a minute, but he's got a lot of it all put back together. Still kind of a few things we're working on customizing and fixing some things that have worn a little bit, but uh, making really good progress. He's out on vacation right now, so I'm going to take a little bit of an opportunity to step in and do some of the things that I want to do on the mast. Let's go take a quick look at some of the things he's been doing first. First thing I want to touch on is a new furler. So before we had a Pro Furl C430 and the furler part of it had worked very well but we had those significant issues with the extrusions while we were in Brazil and even when we got back up to the states this year we noticed kind of the uh, the extrusions were starting to come apart again and I just I was never very happy with that so um, I did a lot of research and we are going now with a Harkin MK4 Ocean Unit 3 if I get that wrong I'll subtitle it um, but it, the whole thing is a bit beefier, the drum is much bigger, and the actual extrusions, let's get up and kind of walk over towards one of them here. If I point down here, the extrusions are actually a lot more robust. So before, uh, it kind of like just screwed into, I don't know, like a plastic fitting or something like that, but these actually have a very robust fitting inside that connects the extrusions there. Now one thing I will note is the Proferal had two tracks. The, the new Ocean Harkin only has one. Um, I have seen people that maybe would use two tracks. I can talk to you for, for this part. Um, I have seen some people that use like the two tracks to do a dual head sail like dead downwind setup, but we've only ever had one Genoa. So that's never been something we've done and never felt the need for a second track. So going down to just a, the single uh, left track is, is fine for me. Um, but yeah, so this, uh, Tim's gotten all the measurements from the old Pro Furl. This should fit into place pretty nicely. Kind of excited to see this on the boat. You can also see Tim has started replacing all of the diamond stays. Those are getting on the boat. Um, the jumpers is what he calls them at least. I've always included parts of the diamond, but uh, the jumpers here on the front part of the mast, he has not put on at least the one here in front of the radar because we're going to be doing a nice little project here underneath the radar. And this is the project. So we are going to be adding a hailer and foghorn underneath the radar. Tim is building up a little bracket for us so we can mount it right there. Uh, the idea being we're going to be going back up to Nova Scotia here this um, summer 20, what is this, 2023? I guess that's when it's going to be. And it's pretty foggy up there at times, so it'll be nice to have an official foghorn. We can don't have to rely on blowing a horn ourselves. So that's one thing. I'm going to be running the wires up for the foghorn today. One more thing before I get started on uh, running new wires and stuff like that, and that is for the radar itself. I'm going to come back down here to this part of the mast, stepping over things very carefully. Um, up here, the actual radar cable itself. I'm gonna poke in here, hopefully you can see that. Um, there is a lot of corrosion and stuff on that cable. Uh, don't want that radar to just kind of crap out on us at some point, so I have ordered a new cable, and we're gonna put that through the mast today as well. Getting the radar cable undone was fairly easy, thanks to a small adapter Raymarine had included in the new kit that fit around the grooves of the connector. But seeing it up close made me even happier it was on my replacement list. Now that it's undone, I can definitely see there is a ton of corrosion on the outside, but the, the actual pins and connectors actually don't look too bad. And the screw threads up on the base of the radar itself, 
Those actually look pretty good too, so shouldn't be too concerned about attaching a new one. What I have discovered though, is that to run the new cable, this end right here is too fat to fit into uh, the opening in the mast there. So we're actually gonna have to pull from the bottom to the top to get this thing out. The line I've got is like a five mil line that I'm gonna try to use as my chase. It's a little bit too big and looking at the conduit in the mast, don't think there's gonna be room to kind of do some loops around. Um, it's just, it's a, little, it's a little bit too thick. So I'm gonna go ahead and just try to do a long section of tape here. Um, it's not the ideal way to do this, but we'll give it a try. There is another line already chased through the conduit, which I wanna leave alone in case I mess this up, then I have a, a, a backup option. Even if I couldn't use some half hitches, I tried to wrap the line around the cable to add a bit more friction. And of course, I did some testing before pulling it through. All right, that is, that's pretty darn strong, so that shouldn't come undone. Time to pull the old cable out. Yeah, that is not easy to do one-handed. I got partway through before I realized that there was a way I could, theoretically, make life easier for myself. If I had been smart or doing any kind of thinking, I would have run the wire that we're going to use for the foghorn through the conduit at the same time I was pulling the chase wire through. So instead, I have got that's the wire for the foghorn, that is the line I'm using for the chase, I've got them taped together, we're just going to pull more chase line through the mast and get the foghorn line up there. Doing this by myself meant getting a bit creative with all the spools. But my fancy setup worked well, and the new foghorn wire came through easily enough. Getting the new radar cable run would prove to be a bit tougher. I've got the radar cable all pulled through the mast now. It definitely took a lot of trips back and forth. Turns out I was actually not that smart because doing the cable for the foghorn first meant that uh, things were just kind of getting a little too trapped in there. So radar cable through. Uh, I'm going to probably use some, some Tef Gel on there, debating about putting some heat shrink around the connector as well to just give it a little bit more protection. But I had to undo the foghorn wire, and now I need to re-fish that through. Continuing with the radar, got the radar new cable all come through. I have added some kind of like uh, flexible chafe guard to it, just as an attempt to A, make sure it doesn't chafe as it's going into the mast, but maybe that'll give it a little more UV protection and we won't have quite as much corrosion where it actually attaches up to uh, the radar. The other thing we're gonna do, I have got down here some Tef Gel. So I'm going to be putting that on the threads uh, on the radar so that screws in. And then might put a little bit around the outside of the actual cable as well, just trying to prevent some of that corrosion. Tim is a huge proponent of Tef Gel and given all the effort we were putting in now, Whatever I could do to prevent future problems would be well worth it. Once everything was screwed down tight, I used some zip ties to secure the cable and try to prevent some chafe while we're out sailing. I think we're looking pretty good here. I'm pleased with how it's all turned out. As you can kind of see in there, all nice and secure. Chafe guard on all the way into the mast. Zip tie holding it nice and secure. We'll call that part of the project done. Taking a closer look at VHF antennas now. I've got this is the old Vesper Marine antenna that we've you've been using, and this one is the new Shakespeare Squatty Body 5215 that we're going with. So this L bracket right there is where the VHF antenna has sat. So there's a noticeable difference. The Vesper Marine antenna is significantly smaller. Uh, in width than the new Shakespeare. So I gotta see, might have to kind of widen this just a little bit, bend the metal to get the Shakespeare to fit in, but we're gonna check that today. And um, yeah, hope that's gonna work out pretty well. I've got the new Shakespeare antenna on. I did have to just bend the metal bracket a little bit for that wider body, but um, I'd say that's sitting pretty nicely. Down here, we've got a new uh, PL259 coax connection that I'm gonna be 
um, making up for that. But for now, we're just gonna leave it as is. This is kind of a test fitting, because if you notice, we're kind of missing a little something up here. Now I do have, this is a new coax cable. I think it's RG213. Hope I got that right, if not, I'll subtitle it. Uh, so that's already run, but I need the mast head to be on top of the mast, and so we can run the wire through that, and then down to the antenna. So, just kind of at a waiting point on this project for now. One more project while I'm here on the mast that I don't think I've talked about yet, and that is we're redoing our radar reflector. The reason for that being, the old one was kind of the tube style. It sat on our diamond stays, and it was pretty beat up, if I'm being honest. And I've done a little more research, and it turns out that tube style is basically worthless. It doesn't really increase the radar signature of the boat, and several kind of tests and reviews said basically it's almost better not to have it, because if you have it, you think your radar signature is better, and it's really not. So instead, what we're going to do is go with this bad boy. This is the Ecomax 230BR. Um, in, in some of that research I was doing, that actually seems to increase radar signatures. It is so much bigger, so we're going to be mounting that here on the mast. I am kind of, this is our second spreader up here, so pretty far up the mast, which should give us decent visibility over the horizon. And the other thing, part of the reason I'm choosing, choosing this location is the diamond stay, or at least the front jumper, is right here. So this will be kind of well and truly protected by that. We shouldn't be having any sails hitting it and stuff like that, but this should be a significant increase in our radar signature. The Echo Max came with a couple of brackets that would mount it to the mast. Drilling holes always makes me a bit nervous, but I went slow and steady, and of course, measured about 50 different times. Not quite perfect, but pretty pleased. It's centered on the mast, so that's a good sign. Um, all the, the rivets fit in there, so also a good sign. Now I'm gonna take it out, um, kind of clean everything up, and then we'll, like I said, use uh, the three, 4,000 UV on the actual bracket where it attaches to the mast, put some Tef gel on all the rivets, and then put it on in. It's the fine details that make the difference in how well an installation holds up long-term. And I only want to have to do this once. Doing the rivets was a bit awkward at a high angle, but I was very pleased with myself that I didn't break any of them off. Both brackets are on. Time for the moment of truth. Is this gonna fit? Let's hope so. Feels good when uh, measurements come out right, and I have messed up riveting in to the mast because riveting is just not my favorite thing. So, feeling pretty pleased with myself. Just a little bit of cleanup left, and then I think pretty happy with the way things are. Still waiting for the new tricolor light to arrive. It's being shipped, so I think that's going to be a pause on the mast projects until that gets here. Tim has been out on vacation, but he is back now. And he's got some new and exciting parts for me. So I'm going to walk over to the building where our mast is being stored. Check that out. Uh, hopefully the work that I did while he was gone is, you know, approved. So excited to go see that. And then uh, if he's got what I think he does, there'll be a few more things on my list to do. And then we can get the mast back on the boat. Which is good. She just doesn't feel like Starry Horizons without the mast up. Working with Tim was like getting a master class in rigging. He had so many great suggestions for us, and he started off by showing me the one he knew I was most excited about. So Tim has come up with a brilliant idea for us. Why don't you explain what's, uh, what you're working with there? Well, before they had a shackle. It, basically, it wasn't pretty. What we got done in Tonga, of all places. So this, this shackle was through that hole, it, and it wallowed out the hole that went, went through. So what we did is we drilled out the hole a half inch, and then I put this half inch threaded eye on it, and then the, the nut is welded in place. That ain't coming out. So there's bronze, 
bushings on either side and then there's a roll pin that goes through that hole that locks the nut and the, 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 the threaded eye into In the place. Yeah, and then now it articulates like that. So we can even move like our uh, screecher code zero over to yeah. a bow and yeah. it will articulate very nicely. Yeah. That's why we work with the experts, Tim. <laughs> That's why we work with the experts. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I am so excited for that new spinnaker halyard swivel setup that Tim's come up with. Uh, it's so much more robust than what we had before. One less thing I have to worry about. No worries about spinnaker halyards just going bing and flying off into the ocean. So that's a definite upgrade. Uh, now while Tim's working on a few other things, let me kind of walk you through some of the other changes we are making on the mast, starting here at the masthead. So if you notice carefully, there are a couple different sheaves up here. These are for the head sails. Um, there's so much tension on these sometimes that we almost flat spotted one of the sheaves. So Tim uh, worked up replacement for that for us. Coming down below, we can see this is where we attach the main hired for our two to one purchase. And previously it had just kind of been a small um, eye or something like that that kind of went through just one of these posts. It was never very strong. It kind of was working its way through. So uh, Tim had them refill some of that in for us, is that the right word? And just kind of beef it up a little bit. And then also we have a pin now, it's probably a little hard to see, that goes the whole distance. And this swivel attaches to that pin with a few spacers in there. So that's gonna be a much more robust setup for us as well. And as I'm walking down the mast, I'm very happy to say the new, Tim calls it our bridge bumper, uh, the new radar reflector, he approved my work. So that does feel good. Further on down here, we have got now our loud hailer setup. So we had a bracket made up for that, for fits just right and not having to worry about that like falling off and everything. So now I need to come get that all wired up as well. And then I think Tim said he's, he's getting pretty close to kind of getting all the um, diamond stays all tensioned up and stuff like that, which means we're getting very close to getting this thing back on the boat. To wrap up my projects, I got started with our new combo tricolor anchor light. And of course, it got a nice coating with Tef Gel. I went with an Optilamp Amazonia 5, which was an upgraded version of what we'd had previously so it could reuse the same mounting holes. This model has a solar sensor to automatically turn on the anchor light at night so I don't have to worry about forgetting to turn it on. It also has an emergency strobe function and an ultra low power draw of about 0.155 amps at 12 volts. I made up a chafe cover for the wire and then got ready to make the splice connections. The only slightly complicated part of this project is the difference in wire sizes. And uh, let's see here. We ran, or I ran, a 14 gauge wire all the way up from the base of the mast up here for the tricolor because it is such a, a long run. And the tricolor itself, if we look down here, that uh, those are those are much smaller smaller wires, so there is a little like protective cover that comes out of the tricolor itself for those wires. So what I need to do is uh, get a heat shrink that's going to be small enough to shrink down over that protective covering coming from the tricolor, but be large enough to get over the three uh, wire butt connections we got to make, and then over the jacket for the triplex wire that's coming up there. So. I'm gonna to try to stagger the uh, butt connectors so that it doesn't get too thick and we can't get, we have to have a huge heat shrink to get over everything. Making up wire connections is a skill I feel pretty confident with at this point, and this part was probably the quickest of the whole project. I'm pretty pleased with how this has ended up. Got it all nice and secured up there so this won't be falling down into the mast. A little bit of extra in case I ever need to pull this out again. It's all nice and secure, chafe cover on, and this is uh, for the wind instrument, so this is also kind of nicely secured in there as well. So I feel pretty good about that. Let's go do the foghorn next.
this one was pretty easy as well. It's pretty much just, you know, electrical wiring and I've got a lot of practice at that. I don't have quite as much practice with the last thing on my list and that's the coax connection for the VHF. For this project, for the VHF antenna, I'm not gonna film this one. It's something I have done before. I know I can do it, but it's been a long time. So I'm gonna have to uh, use a reference video. So I will actually link down in the description below to the video that I am using. Uh, so if you want to know how to do this, go watch that and hopefully we'll cut to a job well done. All finished and it turned out pretty well, which means I am all done with my stuff on the mast. It's gonna feel really good to get this thing back on the boat.